God bless you. Good morning. This is Regina White, and I bring you greetings from uh, the Greater St. James Church of God in Christ, where Superintendent Torrance Markham is my pastor. I praise God for this morning. I'm so glad that we could be together again. And, uh, even though we're going through a pandemic, it uh, doesn't mean that God has changed. We're so glad we have the Lord through this pandemic and through anything else we deal with. So. Uh, we continue to give God glory and trust him to bring us out. All right. Uh, this is our second class on marriage and the family. Marriage and the family. And I want to go very quickly over some of the points last week and then go into our next. We talked about what the family is and God's definition in his word is that a family is a man, woman, and children. That's God's unit, his design from the beginning. We also talked about husbands and wives must talk, sit down together, talk to each other, and respectfully listen to each other. Um, care about what the other person feels. Blaming and screaming and yelling does nothing but take you into divorce. And the church has too many divorces. We don't need any more divorces in the church. And a lot of times that comes through narcissism, being narcissistic, which is a counseling term. It means that you think you're better than everybody. You've got all the answers and, and it's all about you. Um, it can happen through greed, through lust, through carnality, through distrust, uh, fear, and deceit. We don't need any of that in the church. We have the Holy Ghost, we have the word of God. And so we want to get those things out. So that happens by taking time to talk to each other, listen to each other, and pray together. Nothing brings healing like prayer. Honoring God and acknowledging him in your marriage is what keeps it together. Praise God. We talked about men are territorial. And women are nurturing. Men like, you know, their things, their tools, their their man cave, their car. They, they built the home, they, that's their home. They don't want to go back to uh, anything that they may have had in the past that was less than that. They may have to, you know, we're in an economic uh, situation, but God is still the supplier. But men, they like, you know, to keep their things as theirs. They don't want us to bring fresh flowers into their man cave. No, they want to be able to have some things for themselves. Um, but women can be territorial too. Don't mess with a woman's child. Oh my, I cannot tell you what could happen. But women can be territorial over their, their husband, excuse me, their children, and even their position, whether it's at the job, or in the church, women can be territorial over those positions. Those are things that we need to take to the altar, take to the cross, and ask God to deliver us, and that we be humble, walk humbly before the Lord and worthy of the vocation where we've been called. So those were some highlights from last week. Um, couples respect each other. Don't let other people get in the middle of your marriage. That's not their place. The wife comes first, the husband comes first. If I want to ask you to do something, let them know, well, I'll talk to my spouse and we'll see together what the answer will be. Uh, even in counseling, if I'm counseling with someone, uh, with a, a counseling with a man, it can be over the phone, that's okay, but it's better if there was someone else present, a mother is there or the district missionary. We have a wonderful district missionary, thank God for it. Uh, missionary for with someone to be there, Mother Tucker, love Mother Tucker, Mother Markham. It's so good to have someone in the midst. It keeps the enemy out. It's called wisdom. So we want to be mindful of those things. So those were some highlights from last week. So today, they're talking about the family and the units within the family. We want to talk about singles, singles slash widows. Um, 
We're still talking about psychology, the things that affect our minds, the things that we think and how we feel about whatever issues we're dealing with or whatever we're um, faced with. So singles, the mind of a single. And I'm going to read this in your hearing. Uh, singles to live a holy life before the Lord. And when you're so consumed in loving God and working for him, the mate might tap you on your shoulder. Meaning when you're not paying attention because you're so engrossed in doing the will of the Lord, you're so busy for the master, God will send the one for you. And I have a scripture, two scriptures, matter of fact, this morning on this. And let's go to Psalms, the 19th chapter and the 14th verse. Psalms 19, verse 14. And I'll read in your hearing, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The mind and heart of any saint of God, don't have to be single, married definitely, is to let the words of your mouth what comes out of your mouth in the meditation of your heart be acceptable unto the Lord, not so much other people, but unto the Lord. And we want to be kind, we want to be caring, we want to be wise in what we say. You want your conversation and what you believe and feel to be acceptable before the Lord. So you have to follow the word of God for that to happen. That's how it becomes acceptable. Line yourself up with the word of God. And that will be able to help you stay in line. Stay in line. Last night in our Bible study, Pastor Markham said, uh, you don't have to have someone tell you all the time. Preach to yourself. It'll help you grow. And I, I love that. That was really good. So. Think good, think right, think pure, and, you, and the Lord can direct your steps as a single. You're available. You're out there. Uh, you want to make sure you're covered by the blood of Jesus. You're covered by the word of God, and you're obedient to the word. If you're obedient to him, then he'll direct your path. Let's go to the second scripture I have, which is Esther, second chapter. 12th and 13th verse and the 15th verse. Esther uh, went before the king. Uh, Vashti, the original queen, had messed up and she was out. So now the king was looking for a new queen. And Esther went to prepare herself. So let's go to that scripture. That's the Esther 2, verse 12 and 13 and 15. Now, when every maid's turn was come to go into King Ahasuerus after that she had been 12 months, 12 months preparing herself according to the manner of the women, for so were the days of their purification accomplished to wit six months with oil of myrrh and six months with sweet odors and with other things for the purifying of the women, 13. Then thus came every maiden unto the king. Whatsoever she desired was given her to go with her out of the house of the women unto the king's house. And then 15. Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, uh, had taken no, the, oh, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king. She required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor. That's very important. Obtained favor in the sight of all of them that looked upon her. This scripture is so key because 
men and women, you want to carry singles, you want to carry yourself in such a way that even the saints can say, yeah, they're ready. Yeah, they they carry themselves well. They people can speak well of you. You don't want to live a life that people are, are are you know question questionable, not knowing you know what your motives are, what you're doing, and and we're talking about singles today because you want to be in a place that's pleasing to God and that you're taking care of yourself, Esther for 12 months prepared herself. That's a whole year, a whole year preparing herself. Um, six months with oils and perfumes, and then the other six months with sweet odors. I mean, she got that perfume in her skin. She prepared herself, the maidens worked with her, and she was beautiful when they were done. She took care of herself. She prepared herself. And that's what singles have to do. Now, I'm not just going to talk about the girls. I'm going to talk about the boys, too. But there are also men, adult singles, men and women. So if you're in a situation where you are a widow or a widower again, you don't just let yourself go. You still keep yourself together, even if you're not seeking another mate. Still carry yourself well. Don't let yourself go because you're still in the service of the Lord. So this is my question. How are you prepared, girl or boy? How are you dressing? Are you dressing uh, modestly, nicely, uh, clothes that uh, accent and, and, and compliment you? Uh, you don't want to dress like the world in terms of uh, too loose, too tight, too whatever, too high, too whatever. You want to dress modestly with what looks nice and what is uh, beautiful for a young woman, young man. You know, how's your breath? How's your hair? How are your nails? Uh, even if you don't go and get everything all tailored at the beauty shop and all that, are they clean? At least let them be clean if they're not long. Cleanliness. Now, it's not a scripture. People, some people say that, but cleanliness is, it is next to godliness because you're, you're looking the part. You're looking right. You're looking nicely. Um, do you walk like a lady or like an athlete? I'll let that ponder a minute. How do you talk? Are you loud and obnoxious? Or are you calm and peaceful? Are you watching what you say? How you say it? Who you're around? What you say? Are you respecting the elders? Uh, are you being kind? Are you helpful? All of these things are being watched. Singles, you know, I'm sorry, but we're, we're a lot of times on display. Whether you're a widow, after you've lost your husband, people are looking at you again to say, hmm, let's see. And maybe shouldn't be, but that's just human. Uh, so are you being loud and boisterous and everybody can hear you laughing down the street, uh, talking loud? Are you yelling <laughs> at people? Are you keeping yourself composed and, uh, you know, proper? Uh, how do people... Or how do you treat other people? How do you treat them? How do you treat the mothers? How do you treat the pastor? How do you treat your mom, your dad? How do you treat your brothers? All of this is a part of carrying yourself in a way that's pleasing to the Lord and, you know, pleasing to yourself, that you feel good about yourself. If you're depressed and you're down and you're having you know, anxiety and, and issues, it'll show. If you're mean and you're greedy or, 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 you know, any of that, it will come out. It'll show. And it's a turnoff. People run from that kind of thing. So you want to be watchful goals of how you conduct yourself. Um, where do you go? Uh, what do you do? How do you, you know, carry yourself? And 
Are you submissive to your pastor, to the church mothers, to your own mom, to your own dad? Are you uh, doing well in uh, humility? Or are you high-minded because you feel you're so cute, so handsome, that you are who you are and you don't have to listen to anyone? Well, that's not God's way. And it will make Dota run. You will not have anyone come in your direction, whether it's a mate or not, because of your behavior. Uh, do you attend Bible study? Sunday school, um, prayer meetings? Are you active in your church? Uh, are you just trying to find ways to stay out and go and do other things with friends? Well, that's being watched. All of that is under scrutiny. Unfortunately, it is. But if there's someone looking for you, you don't know it yet. The Bible says, he that findeth a wife, he to find it a wife. You don't throw yourself out there. You don't, you know, put yourself on terms of being really overwhelmingly out there. Everybody knows what you're after. No, 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 no. You want to be discreet. You want to be well-dressed. You want to take care of yourself and you'll become noticeable to someone who may be interested. You know, make sure who's interested is a godly man or a godly woman. You don't need anything out in the street because, uh, you know, we don't want to be unequally yoked. He might be cute out there. He might be nice. He might buy you a hamburger. And, you know, he might buy you a pretty uh, bouquet of flowers. That's great. But what I said last week was love is blind. Marriage is an eye opener. So, when people meet each other, they put on their Sunday best, so to speak. They put on the best that they have so they can be presentable and accepted. But when you get married, all of it comes out. Whatever's really there, boom, it's out. Can't get it back. And many times you'll say, as I mentioned last week, who did I marry? Who is this person next to me? You want to be able to say, I know the person next to me. I know who they are and they know who I am. So you want to attend your Bible studies. You want to be active. Uh, do you gossip? Do you backbite? Do you blame others? Or are you constantly keeping something up? Everyone knows, oh boy, here she comes. Watch what you say. She might repeat it. You don't want that. You want to be quiet. You want to be a, a, of a prayerful spirit. You want to be watchful and, and alert. You can say no. You don't have to take anything that comes down the pipe. You can say no. You can care about yourself and be so discreet until when the wrong thing comes, you can say, oh, no, 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 not that. Don't need that. And it's enticing and alluring and inviting as they may be. You have your own standards in the word of God and for yourself that you can know and discern between good and evil. Can you cook? Do you wash clothes? Can you keep a room clean? These things may seem like, what? But yes, that's real important. Because if you don't do it in mama's house, daddy's house, you won't do it in your house. Because when you get in your house, you're going to feel like, oh, I'm free. I can do what I want and leave everything on the floor and leave the tube of toothpaste open. and All those things that people use for reasons as to why they divorce. Now, there are some cases of divorce that have been abusive. Cases of divorce that have been, uh, y y your life is in danger, legal. That's different than just saying, well, I didn't like the way he closed the door when he left the room. He made me mad. I'm upset. I don't want to be married anymore. Those things don't hold up under the word of God and not even in court. So you have to be able to be strong within yourself, know who you are. 
carry yourself. And if you've been blessed to have your mother with you, lady, listen to her. She's trying to help. Don't get mad and say, well, you don't know. I know what I want to do. You're going in the wrong path. She's been there. She can help you. And she can bless you if you let her. And you'll miss some of the pitfalls. Oh, my goodness. My time is getting out of here. <laughs> but praise the Lord. So listen to mom, listen to dad, young men, and vice versa. Ladies, listen to your dad. Sons, listen to your mom. It's okay because they love you and they've been there. And for the men, now this is going to seem a little graphic, but this is what we need. You're single too, and you're not perfect. We want the world to be perfect. You got some standards to work on too. So are you sweaty all the time? I know that sounds like, Sister White? Oh, yeah. Are you dirty all the time? Or, or it's, it's one thing if you're working, but go home, shower, get it together before you come. Uh, young ladies are watching that. Uh, do you conduct yourself like an intelligent young man? Or do you act like a thug? Now, let's just be real. Let's just bring it as it is. Do you want to act and portray yourself like um, some rapper or something in the world? Or do you want to be discreet and be intelligent and be astute, young man? Uh, do you have those clear personal standards, biblical standards? Do you believe the word of God? Do you live for the Lord? Are you saved? Young ladies, are you saved? Because if you get anything outside of salvation, you are headed toward shipwreck. How do you dress, young man? Do you dress nicely? Do you keep yourself together? Do you come to church properly dressed as you should? And are you respectful? These are things that a lot of times we'll talk to the girls and we'll talk to the women, but I don't hear a whole lot said to the men. It's important. Young ladies are watching you too. They want to know what kind of husband they're going to have, what kind of father for their children. They want to see how you treat your mom, how you treat your sisters. It's good to see, and I mentioned this too last week, see each other in different settings. How does he act at the restaurant? How does she act at home? How do, how do they conduct themselves at church? Are they attentive or are they hiding their phone and texting all during the service? Uh, are they right there with the pastor? Are they serving him? Are they serving the mothers? Or are they somewhere downstairs playing? All of these things, and I tell you, is some terrible things that have happened in the basement of churches. While all of us are upstairs shouting and dancing, something foul is happening downstairs. These are things that maybe that we've never really talked about a lot, but I'm here to do it because we need it. So many shipwrecks have happened because we just kind of let things go. Oh, Forget about it, pray about it, but sometimes they need to be addressed so it can stop. So singles, there is a, a proper order. Esther took 12 months to prepare herself before she went before the king. When you're coming of age, young ladies, young men, uh, into your teens, you, you, now you already know how to be clean, and how to be uh, dress your age. But you don't stop listening to mom or dad or the pastor because you turn 13, 13, or even 18. Just because you're 18 doesn't mean that you don't listen to anybody. Now you're in the beginning of adulthood. You need wisdom more than ever before because now you have a new freedom. And that freedom needs to be contained. It needs it's freedom, but it still has to be directed. It still has to be right. It can't just go willy nilly. You got to be able to understand what you should do. And the thing that I always 
told my children, and I think I'm going to be wrapping up with this, is just because you can doesn't mean you should. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. And that goes from the teenager all the way up to the oldest person. Just because you have that liberty, that freedom, doesn't mean it's the best thing for you to do. So we want wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing for anybody, whether you're a teenager, single, or whether you're one of the mothers of the church or the pastor of the church, the bishop, whomever you may be, wisdom. Because it's the word of God. It's not me. It's the word. Wisdom is the principal thing. And in all of your getting, get understanding. Praise the Lord. We have just a couple of minutes. I don't know if there was a question or not. But the floor is open for the next two or three minutes to um, answer any questions. So if you want to get a question in real quick, we'll try to answer it for you. Otherwise, I will be wrapping up in about four minutes. God is good and he loves us and he wants us to understand his will, his way. If we follow him, everything will work out. So you need to be prayerful so that you can hear his voice and be led by his spirit. If you don't single, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, Speak the Lord and receive the Holy Ghost. That's what's going to keep you and lead you into all truth. He will let you know. You come across someone you meet, you'll, you'll know. Mm -mm, that's not the one. Or mm, maybe, Lord, I seek you. What is your will? Talk to your parents. Don't you shut down and or get on the phone and text all your friends. They don't have advice for you. They're in the same boat you're in. You need someone who's been there that can understand the nature of a man or a woman and train you, teach you, be open because if you listen to them, it's going to bless you. You're not going to be under them all your life, but for the time that you are, that's the time to be trained and to get wisdom and knowledge and understanding. They're not your enemies. Your parents are not your enemies. They love you. They want to see good for you. And a lot of times they can see what's down the road that you can't see. And God can see even further that your parents can't see. So we all need to be led into truth and righteousness. but have to be open to do that. You have to have an open, open mind and be willing to submit and to hear because it will bless you. And I guarantee you, don't be in a rush. And I'll finish with this if there are no questions today. Don't be in a rush to grow up. Enjoy your childhood and your teenage years because when you get older, you're going to wish you were young again. Because when those bills start coming and the demands of life, you'll be glad that you have God. Because that's the only way we, any of us will make it. So enjoy your childhood, your teenage years. You're going to be an adult longer than you were a child or a teenager. So relish those times and God will bless you. Amen. So we talked about the singles today. And remember, I'm going to try to keep reiterating to couples, love each other, forgive each other, and talk to each other. Listen to me. God bless you. Talk to you next week.